Ella started rambling through the woods, and she thought, well, I've often seen a cat without a grin, but a grin without a cat? Why, that's the most curious thing I ever saw in my life. Alice waited. All in the golden afternoon, full leisurely we glide, for both our oars with little skill, by little arms applied. While little hands make vain pretense our wanderings to guide. She thought it must be the house of the March Hare, because the chimney was shaped like an ear and the roof was thatched with fur. It was so large. Thus grew the tale of Wonderland, thus slowly, one by one, its quaint events were hammered out. And now the tale is done. Annoyed at the behavior of the March Hare and the Mad Hatter, Alice had left their stupid tea party and found herself back in the Hall of Doors. At last, she could get into the beautiful garden where she realizes that the characters she meets are all playing cards. Alice joined in the most ridiculous game of croquet with the Queen of Hearts, who gradually sent all her opponents to jail. When released from prison, the Duchess's temper seemed much improved. You can't think how glad I am to see you again, you dear old thing. The game's going on rather better now. Tis so, and the moral of that is, oh, tis love, tis love that makes the world go round. Somebody said that it's done by everyone minding their own business. Oh, well, it means much the same thing. And the moral of that is, take care of the sense and the sounds will take care of themselves. How fond she is of finding morals in things. I dare say you're wondering why I don't put my arm around your waist. The reason is, I'm rather doubtful about the temper of your flamingo. Shall I try the experiment? He might bite. Very true. Flamingos and mustard both bite. And the moral of that is, birds of a feather flock together. Only mustard isn't a bird. Right, as usual. What a clear way you have of putting things. It's a mineral, I think. Of course it is. There's a large mustard mine near here. And the moral of that is, the more there is of mine, the less there is of yours. Oh, I know. It's a vegetable. It doesn't look like one, but it is. I quite agree with you. And the moral of that is, be what you would seem to be. Or, if you'd like it put more simply, never imagine yourself not to be otherwise than what it might appear to others that what you were or might have been was not otherwise than what you had been would have appeared to them to be otherwise i think i should understand that better if i had it written down i shall make you a present of everything i've said as yet i'm glad they don't give birthday presents like that <gasps> Oh, a fine day, your majesty. Now, I give you fair warning. Either you or your head must be off, and that in about half no time. Oh, oh. Take your choice. Oh. 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 Have you seen the mock turtle yet? No. I don't even know what a mock turtle is. It's the thing mock turtle soup is made from. I never saw one, or heard of one. Come along then, and he shall tell you his history. Up, lazy thing, and take this young lady to see the mock turtle, and to hear his story. I have some executions to attend to. <sighs> Oh, what fun! How can executions be fun? 
Why, she, it's all her fancy, that thing never executes no you know. Come on. Here is the mock turtle. What is his sorrow? It's all his fancy, that. He hasn't got no sorrow, you know. This here young lady, she wants what to know your history, she do. I'll tell it her. Sit down, both of you, and don't speak a word till I've finished. <laughs> Once, I was a real turtle. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for your interesting story. When we were little, we went to school in the sea. The master was an old turtle. We used to call him Tortoise. Mm. Why did you call him Tortoise if he wasn't one? We called him Tortoise because he taught us. Really, you are very dull. You ought to be ashamed of yourself for asking such a simple question. And we had the best of educations. In fact, we went to school every day. And so do I. You needn't be so proud as all that. We learned reeling and writhing to begin with, and then the different branches of arithmetic. Mm -hmm. Ambition, distraction, uglification and derision. I never heard of uglification. What is that? Hmm? Never heard of uglifying. <laughs> you know what to beautify is, I suppose. Yes. It means to make anything prettier. Well then. If you don't know what to uglify is, uh, you are a simpleton. <laughs> <laughs> what else did you learn? Well, there was mystery. Mystery, ancient and modern, with seography. Then drawing. <laughs> the drawing master was an old conger eel. He taught stretching and fainting in coils, too. Yeah, I went to the classical master, though. He was an old crab, he was. I never went to him. He taught laughing and grief. And how many hours a day did you do lessons? Ten hours the first day, nine the next, and so on. What a curious plan. Well, that's the reason they're called lessons, because they lessen from day to day. <laughs> Were you ever introduced to a lobster? I once tasted. <laughs> no, never. So you can have no idea what a delightful thing a lobster quadrille is. No, indeed. What sort of a dance is it? Oh, well, you you first form into a line uh, along the seashore. Two lines. Then, mm -hmm. when you've cleared all the yeah. jellyfish out of the way... You <laughs> generally take some time. You advance twice. Eat with a lobster as a partner. Of course. Advance twice. Set to partners. Change lobsters and retire in the same order. Then you know you throw the... Yeah, the lobsters. You as far out <laughs> the sea as you can. Swim after them. Earn a somersault in the sea. Back to land again. And... And that's all the first figure. Mm. It must be a very pretty dance. Mm. Would you like to see a little of it? Very much indeed. Come, we can try the first figure. We can do it without lobsters, you know. Form into a line! <laughs> <laughs> Will you walk a little faster, said a whiting to a snail. There's a porpoise close behind us and he's treading on my tail. See how eagerly the lobsters and the turtles all advance. They are waiting on the shingle. Will you come and join the dance? Will you? Won't you? Will you? Won't you? Will you join the dance? Will you? Won't you? Will you? Won't you? Will you join the dance? <laughs> <laughs> What matters it how far we go, his scaly friend replied. There is another shore, you know, upon the other side. The farther off from England, the nearer is to France. Then turn not pale, beloved snail, but come and join the dance. Will you? Won't you? Will you? Won't you? Will you join the dance? Will you? Won't you? Will you? Won't you? Will you join the dance? Will you join the dance? Oh, 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 oh. Thank you, 
Thank you. It's a very interesting dance to watch, but I haven't heard a song about a whiting before. Do you know why it's called a whiting? I have never thought about it. Why? It does the boots and shoes. Does the boots and shoes? Well, what are your shoes done with? I mean, what makes them so shiny? They're done with blacking, I believe. Boots and shoes under the sea are done with whiting. But what are they made of? Soles and eels, of course. Any shrimp could have told you that. If I'd been the whiting, I'd have said to the porpoise, keep back, please. We don't want you with us. No wise fish would go anywhere without a porpoise. Would you like the Mock Turtle to sing you a song? Oh, yes, please. Sing a turtle soup, will you, old fellow? <laughs> Beautiful soup, so rich and green, waiting in a hot tureen. Who for such dainties would not stoop? Soup of the evening, beautiful soup. Soup of the evening, beautiful soup. Beautiful soup. Beautiful soup. Soup of the evening, beautiful, beautiful soup. <laughs> Trial is now beginning. Come on. What trial is it? Come on. Now sit on my tail. How dare you, sir? I always sit here. Silence in court. Oh, trial today. I've no idea. Just don't sit in my seat. Silence in court. the judge because of his great wig and that's the jury box and those creatures I suppose they are the jurors what are they doing they can't have anything to put down yet before the trials begun they are putting down their names for fear they should forget them before the end of the trial stupid things stupid things stupid what things, I, stupid stupid things. I wish they'd get the trial done and hand out the refreshments silence in court Herald, read the accusation. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> uh, the Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts, all on a summer day. The Knave of Hearts, he stole those tarts and took them quite away. Disgusting. Ah, uh, consider your verdict. No, not yet, not yet. There's a great deal to come before that. A great deal of what? Evidence, Your Majesty. This paper has just been picked up. Oh, very well. What's in it? I haven't opened it yet, but it seems to be a letter written by the prisoner to... to somebody. It really must have been that. <laughs> Unless it was written for nobody, which, which isn't usual, you know. Uh, please, Your Majesty, I didn't write it and they can't prove I did. There's no name signed at the end. Ah, well, if you didn't sign it, that only makes the matter worse. You, you, you must have meant some mischief, or, or else you'd have uh, si you, you signed your name like an honest man. That proves his guilt. It proves nothing of the sort. Let the jury consider their verdict. No! No. Sentence first, verdict afterwards. Stuff and nonsense. The idea of having the sentence first. Hold your tongue. I won't. Off with her head. Very sound decision. Off with her head. Off with her head. That's the way. Chop all their heads off. Uh, call the first witness. First witness. It's a hatter. Look, oh, yes, look, yes, it's a hatter. It is. It's oh, the hatter. Oh, I beg hatter. your pardon, Your Majesty, for, 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 for bringing these in, but I hadn't quite finished my tea when I was sent for. <laughs> you ought to have finished. When did you begin? Um, 14th of March, I think it was. Uh, 15th? <laughs> 16th? Uh, uh, write that down. Hmm. Oh, I wish you wouldn't squeeze so. I can hardly breathe. I can't help it. I'm growing. Uh, take off your hat. It isn't mine. Ah! Stolen! No, I keep them to sell. I, I, I'm none of my own. I'm a, I'm a hatter. 
pure criminal type. Uh, <coughs> now, give uh, your evidence uh, and don't be nervous, or, or, or I'll have you executed on the spot. Very sound decision. Chop all their heads Bring off. Bring me the list of singers in the last concert. Oh, your majesty, I... Give your evidence, or, 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 or I'll have you executed. Whether, whether you're nervous or not. No, Majesty. I, I had just begun my tea, uh, not above a week or so, and, and what with the bread and butter getting so thin, and the twinkling of the tea. The twinkling of the what? It began with the tea. But it's of course twinkling begins with the tea. Do you, do you, do you take me for a dunce? Huh? Go on. Huh? I'm a poor man, and, and most things twinkled after that. Only the March Hare said... I did it. Sit down, sir. You did? I deny it. He denies it. So, uh, uh, leave out that part. Well, at any rate, the Dormouse said... Oh. Oh. Yeah. After that, I, I, I cut some more bread and butter. But what did the Dormouse say? Th that I can't remember. You must remember, or I'll have you executed. Off with mm. his head! You must remember, <laughs> or, or I'll uh, have you executed. Oh, I'm a poor man, Your Majesty. Poor old hatter. No, very poor speaker. <laughs> hooray! Hurrah! <laughs> Silence in court. I won't be suppressed. Don't take your hands off me. Help! Oh, dear. 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 Oh